he's a music supervisor, producer, and trailer music library owner. Uh, uh, Exit Music and, and music and sound design for film, television, video games, and advertising. And really happy to have him here today. Please put your hands together for Mr. Todd Legault. <laughs> really appreciate yeah. you being I love here, it. man. <laughs> so um, even though we haven't worked together yet, I'm I'm glad to have you as a connection, and especially because you have one of those um, top music libraries in Canada for trailer music. Yeah, and I'm going to brag for you because I don't know anybody else that's supplying the blockbusters like you are. So <laughs> yeah. there you go. And uh, congratulations on all your success, obviously. Uh, it's things have even grown since I first checked out your library uh, a few years ago. Yeah. So um, I guess I better start making trailer music now, hey? It's gotten competitive. Okay. It's definitely uh, everyone wants a piece of that game. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive into some questions here. Um, and um, one, the first top, one of the first off the top is like, um, how long have you had the, the trailer music library? Like, when did you start that? I started that with a guy that I was uh, introduced to through a mutual friend in Vancouver. Um, mm -hmm. He was actually an American up there doing, he was an actor. And he's doing a show with this a friend of mine. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, my friend is like, oh, this, this guy Christian writes like this kind of stuff you're into, this trailer stuff. And so I, I hooked up with him. And we started, uh, we think our, I did our first job uh, was a custom scoring job for a movie called Pulse. So it's, you know, been whatever, 15, 16 years since the trailer, uh, since the library was started. Um, so what made you want to pursue a career in the music business? Because it's certainly not easy. What made you want to do that instead of being a plumber? <laughs> yeah, well, that was one of the things. <laughs> I didn't want to be a plumber. Um, I don't know. I was just always obsessed with music since I was a little, you know, since I can remember being, you know, a, a toddler. Like, I think the first song I really got obsessed with was um, Rock and Robin. So, and it's still a great tune. Um, but so I remember being really into music since then. And then, you know, growing up and, and seeing the lives of rock stars and what they, you know, what their lives look like and you playing music for a living and and having fans and making money and all that, that, that dream, right? Um, yeah. In saying that, those that are wanting to get into trailer music, what is the format for construct, constructing a um, contemporary uh, trailer queue for these days? I think that one of the main things is to keep it simple like not overwriting no one wants to hear how great your chops are or your runs or you know it has to serve the picture right like any other music uh sync to any other you know, visual mm -hmm. um it still has to be interesting but still simple enough to serve the picture and not getting on top of the narration or the dialogue or you know it's it's um but I guess the structure of a trailer cue basically is the three acts you know you've got an intro as an example, make like a 30 second, 45 second intro, a second act where it sets up the, the story, you know, the mm -hmm. narrative. And then there's a, you know, usually it's a big back end uh, where it's kind of all like no holds barred. It's kind of where everything breaks out and uh, brings you to the climactic ending. Um, that being said, editors will chop the crap out of your cue. They'll just make it work with however they want. So, sure. I mean, I've heard cuts where it's not even in time. Like, it's just, they just yeah. like, I want this piece here. And they just yeah. chop it up and sandwich it together. And it, and it works. That's the thing I think a lot of people get caught up with is like, they get way too precious about their cues. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, that didn't work. Write another one, like write a thousand, you know, just write and write and write more and don't be precious. They're not your little babies. Like. Um, but overall, you still don't want to have cues that have like a billion things going on, right? Like right. maybe maybe four chords if, if you're changing chords, like simple and, and and often they're the same chords. Like you know, if you watch, go watch twenty trailers, and if they're not, most of them are covers nowadays, or or you know remixes or trailerizations of well known cues. But if it's original music, it's usually like yeah, like four chords. Maybe sometimes it's two. It's just going back from a one to a six or something, and and then kind of building off of that um so yeah, it's, it's kind of like you want to make something simple that works but also have something unique so it doesn't sound like everybody else obviously things right yeah, yeah. you're not the star right? The, right the visuals are really so you're just there to, to back it up do you have um a lot of composers that build these different styles for you or um yeah we have like different composers who have different strengths you know we've got a really great orchestral guy from italy um there's an awesome like edn electronic guy we use sometimes from vancouver and then there's a handful of other people who kind of do uh, sound design and kind of 
they're kind of jack of all trades, but um, I'm, I'm really more interested in a composer that can do like one thing really great instead right. of like, I can do anything. When you were looking for new composers, do you search them out or do you have another way that composers can submit to you on your website? They'll usually hit us up on our, um, through the email on our site, which is info at exitmusic.com. XIT, there you go, folks. I hope XIT you're music. Yeah. yeah. As a composer yourself, what are some of your go-to sample libraries for trailer music? Um, in general, for sound design, I like libraries like uh, Keep Forest. They have awesome stuff. Um, sample tracks. Um, the Boom Library has great stuff. Um, and again, like if you're using them for sound design, you never use them naked. Like you never just use them on their own. You have to do something to them or layer them or make it your own. It's, you can't just like, I bought this thing, so I'm going to use it. And that's my cue. Like, that's just the way to get in trouble. Um, you know, I might use an element that has a, has a low end and then another element that has the attack. And then maybe I'll stretch them out or pitch them or, and then throw a third thing in there add some reverb, you know, add some bass from a synth or something. So, and it's way more fun to like build up something instead of just, you know, copying like, yeah, right. And create your own. And yeah. Or, and, yeah. Or I'll do field recordings. I have a field recorder and I'll, I'll go yeah. like, like record my creaky gate and, nice. you know, do something with that. Or um, yeah, that that's a lot of fun is making your own recordings and then making some of that. Cause no one's going to have that sound. That's like that's totally right. unique. Right. Um, as far as like composing uh, more like musical libraries, I would say like um, like Spitfire Audio, great yeah. if you're great if you're an orchestral person for sure. Omnisphere, you know that that synth yeah. is just like and it's everywhere and it's it's deep and it's um, who else? String Audio, they do good mm -hmm. stuff. They're a, mm -hmm. a company out of LA. When you were working as a music supervisor, what were the most important things that people pitching to you should have? um in order before you receive the music i'd say like a really clear concise way of downloading or streaming music that you're sending to me um like three tracks you know it was great it's nice and a like, little package um and the other thing is like don't send me if i send you a brief like i send it a big search to a bunch of people like hey i'm looking for this the one thing that really um, turns me off is when I send out a search and they give me something totally not what I asked for. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I do. it's unbelievable what people yeah. will send me when they like, did you read this at all? Like don't, and I'm super specific about my searches. So that's one way to not, um, stay on my search list. Yeah. And sometimes that means you have to hold back and don't send anything because it's not what was asked exactly. for, you know, so just hold off till the next time. What is the best way for a composer or songwriter to capture your attention as a music supervisor these days? I'd say an effective subject line um, and a short, clear email introduction pitch and what your intentions are. And then, yeah, and then having like undeniably great music is like huge, but don't send MP3s as an attachment, send links because it just bogs up the whole system if you're sending MP3s it had to an email. So. How important are titling, uh, having the right titles on the cues for you? I think titles can be pretty important. You know, you know, if I see a track that just says um, big monster, you know, okay, I, I think I know what that's about, but maybe it could be colossal beast or something a little more, a little cooler that would, dis or maybe more descriptive without being like too like on the nose. I, I want to make sure we have the title no one else is using. So I'll do a search for, with other libraries to make sure we're not using a title someone's already used. Um, can you take us through the process of building a trailer queue? So if I'm building a horror queue, I'll have something in mind of kind of what I want to do. Like what, what kind of horror queue is it? Is okay. it a, is it a, is it like an organic folky, you know, horror queue, or is it like um, super like metallic and slashery and, and kind of sharp sounding. So I'll kind of figure out what I want to do first. I'll just start, you know, maybe with a drone or something, just a pad or just, and then start making it like warbly, like not quite right, you know, stuff like that, building yeah, things something's up. Something's coming. Know, yeah, for something's sure. Something's Anticipation's <laughs> huge. Yeah. Um, and then, then, then I'll maybe I'll start adding some hits, just some clunky, crusty, weird hits, just to, just to make some uh, points in the, in the time. So on the one or something like that, just, just yeah. to start keeping time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, maybe add some tick ticks, adding some like 
syncopated rhythms just to kind of you're always building the thing with excuse me i should have mentioned building a trailer queue it's always building you're always building and building and building and building yeah. and you're rarely changing keys it's not a song like that it's just you're building a vibe and you're expanding on it and we do like to make breaks because what you want to do is you want to make it easier you want to make it as easy as you can for the editors to, to cut with so if there's some nice break points in there that they can like cleanly break away from you know stop the queue have a, a quippy dialogue line and then you can come back in with the with the you know the next level of the queue that's great i like to build things with rhythm you know start with a pad and then I find once the rhythm is set up, then I have a structure I can start like laying on things on top of. And so it's not just nebulous and like there's no time and it's, it's all over the map. I found it way easier once you just kind of set or, you know, you could even take a marker and put like, okay, after, at 45 seconds, at 60 seconds, at a minute and a half or whatever. <laughs> and then you kind of see, well, okay, I have to, I want to finish by this point, this idea. And then. So you usually always work with a click track? Yeah. And that big reason is probably to make it easier on the editors to cut or in, yeah. in the, in the pace of the scenes. Right. Yeah. But if it's, if some ending with a rhythm, you want to, you want to be on a grid usually for sure. I'm more of a guy who finds the songs that I think is going to work for what they're looking for, for the trailers, for the trailers. Yeah. To promote, to promote market and all of that. Yeah. The editors have a lot more, um, say and how the cut's going to be and they they often will pick their own music or they'll be the ones coming to me saying i need this kind of thing um so really the editors are kind of the the main focus of the process for trailers uh are you oh, just my last question then are you looking yeah. for any music music or composers right now if so what styles yeah we're always looking um it's again, I, again it's best if the sender knows that we're primarily a trailer library yeah. So what will happen is um, just to go off topic a little bit, I'll get, like I was saying, I'll get composers submitting music to me and it's clearly not for trailers. It's for film and TV. And I can't like, even if it's really good, I can't in good conscience take that on because while we have sub publishers who get our stuff into TV and stuff like that, that's a 50% cut. So by the time a composer who I take on, if they get something in TV, they're looking at 25% of the, of the income and that's doesn't feel right. So I would suggest to them, go find a, um a music library or a sync agency that deals with tv and film directly and which is brings up a good point how does, the money, how does the money work with trailers is it different than it's totally different it's an upfront okay. fee there's an upfront sync fee and there's no back end that's why that's why it pays well when you do get upfront money it's good money because there's okay. no back end there's yeah. no there's no PRO collections there's it's it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a bio but they don't own the queue forever they I they see. have it for that campaign um, oh, okay and then you can use it for another trailer yeah i've had like sound design cues that have finished in hundreds of trailers just oh, man, because they, cool. just because they work know that yeah so you can reuse it it can be reused thousands of times because it's just it's like a tool currently we're interested in writers who are available to do custom scoring and that's like at any time of the day it could be like hey i need a custom score done and that's kind of a it's an intense process because you could be up against like eight other composers depending on how many people the studio or the trailer has asked for that's another thing i should mention the timelines and trailers are super fast it's like i need this cue in an hour not in what? two weeks. yeah it's fast it's a super fast turnaround um so we're looking for people who can do cust fast custom work another thing we've kind of been looking at is writers who who come to us with a almost a full album like fleshed out like the concept is there the music's pretty much there and that's a great thing for us because it's it saves us a lot of time a lot of back and forth uh, what are the elements that would make a trailer stand out to you? Um, gr great production. And then something, yeah, something unique. And what I'm really liking is someone who can take something and keep it fairly minimal, but really interesting still. What are your needs now and how, how can we help? Like just great music and like so, such a vague answer, but like um, well-produced, <laughs> focused on trailers, something unique. Basically, if you're really good at one genre or style or sound design or one thing but i find the people who really focus on what they like to do and what they're good at the most uh they usually have the best output i think it's just turning on that faucet and letting all the, the crap flow out and then the good stuff comes out too you know so don't be precious with your with your music like that that's great advice really is yeah.